And welcome to SEC Sports Roundtable. This is your host, Shane Bailey, sporting everything I can, trying to uh, rally my troops, so to speak, this week. So uh, can't tell. We are, we're adorning the UK blue. We even have the lower third with the UK banner as well as the name in blue and white. So uh, everything I can to, to try to move those cats along uh, with us here on the eve of the SEC tournament here in Nashville, Tennessee. So we uh, thought we'd move up the podcast a couple days, try to give a little preview now that the, the seedings have been set. Uh, ball's going to get tipped off here in less than 24 hours now from recording. So wanted to get this out here so so you folks could get that. And joining me tonight, uh, a little, little we're, we're a light staff on the, the round table, but uh, glad to welcome Britton Burton. Long time uh, since you've been on, so happy that you were able to make it tonight, Britton. Thanks. Glad to be here. Uh, it hasn't been a while. I guess once football ends, Alabama fans don't have a lot to talk about yeah, <laughs> right now. Win a national championship and then, you know, just disappear for a while. It's <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, now that uh, we'll, we'll talk football for a minute, it's, and we've got plenty of time to talk about bas- uh, basketball as we, we move into this. But, you know, now that the dust has settled off of the uh, – McCarran girlfriend fiasco or not fiasco, you know what's what's the thoughts of an Alabama fan there? Um, it's still weird. I mean, actually, I haven't. I mean, are they still together or what, what's going on with that? I haven't really heard anything. I just know she's on like that stupid diving show on CBS or whatever, and she was at the Super Bowl as a reporter. I, as far as I know, that she's still together. I think she, uh, AJ McCarran was on Dan Patrick. Um, a week or so ago, and, and he was making some some questions about whether um, they she she could be with uh, somebody else's girlfriend in the stands and play nights. I forgot which quarterback's girlfriend uh, he was he was talking about. So apparently they are, but are they are still together? Oh, well, that's good. But you got to wonder how much that they are together. I mean, because she's blowing up. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, she that's... got a gig doing the Super Bowl and. <laughs> There's a couple of other reporter type uh, gigs that she's gotten since she uh, since the national championships. So. Right, and she was in the swimsuit issue. I mean, she's like famous now. Yeah, you know, he's like like they were saying, you know, she had more Twitter followers than he did after the. After the <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just so, goes to show you that all you have to do is look good, and you can go a long, long way in this world if you're a woman. I, I, I haven't heard her talk yet, so. I, I, I'm gonna guess her interview skills are. I mean, I'm gonna guess her interview skills are fine. But, you know, I, I I don't know how intelligent she is or how how southern of a drawl she might have. I don't know. I mean, she's <laughs> yeah. an Auburn person, right? She went to Auburn, so. Yeah, she, she went to Auburn. I haven't heard her talk either. So. Doesn't she? She grew up in Alabama. I mean, she. I know I have a southern accent. It was easy to to be spotted that that this is not some midwesterner doing this podcast. So. So I don't have a whole lot of room to talk there, but, uh, you know, I mean, she's from Alabama. I've heard people down there, they, they can have a southern draw if they need to. Uh, so, you know, maybe maybe she went to some vocal lessons and she doesn't have one. Who knows? I mean, the, those pageant girls, yeah. they, they got some crazy stuff they do to try to, to win those pageants. But it's, it's dedication. <laughs> you know, it's a sport. So we're, we're glad they, they wear the high heels and the bathing suits, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I guess that's a, a good enough tangent to, to either lose every listener we've ever had or, or maybe gain a few new ones. So if you are new to the podcast or you listen in every week, uh, again, the SEC Sports Roundtable is a podcast that where we talk about, as, as the name it's, you know leads you to believe, SEC Sports. We talk football. We talk basketball. We do talk some baseball uh, occasionally. We have someone like Blair Smiley who, who's on pretty frequently if he's able to join in. Uh, we let him talk baseball. He's he's definitely the the person that keeps up with that before they hit Hoover. I think most casual fans in the the baseball arena don't even know that uh, there is baseball till they get to Hoover. Uh, so we probably won't touch on baseball tonight, uh, especially since we're we're looking at the, the men's basketball. We'll probably talk most of the brackets, and we'll talk a little bit of the SEC tournament bracket, how that shakes out, uh, as well as look at a little bracketology. Uh, listen to what Joe Lenardi's talking about. See what we think, whether we agree or disagree with his uh, last four, first four, that type of uh, la- uh, 
into the, the tournament bracket. That's basically where if you want to look at the SEC, you know, that's where the bulk of our, our options are right now. So we've got uh, and that last four, first four, and, and next four, I think that's where um, the majority of our, our, our brackets, or I'm sorry, most of the uh, tournament the teams are going to lie. So chances are, are pretty slim that we're going to be able to move that up any. But we'll talk about that as we as we get into this. Is there anything you've got before we, we talk about that, Britton? No, just, I mean, you kind of led me into one of the things I was going to talk about. There's basically a bubble sitting on the Nashville downtown arena this this week. I mean, that's is it the entire bubble? bubble is in Nashville. Is it a blue bubble? <laughs> You're hoping so. I am. Have you been downtown yet? Um, no, I haven't. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen how the blue mist is way, is going to come in, but I do know that the tickets this year seem to be quite a bit cheaper. So it has me thinking that the the blue mist won't be here in quite as much full force since they're not as good this year. Because normally the tickets are really really expensive and hard to get, and that doesn't seem to be the case this year. Yeah, well, I mean. I know that it is. It's a hard ticket, and I've gotten a call or two saying, "Hey, I might have an extra ticket for this night or that night," and it's it's the early stuff. And you know that extra days. This is the first year we've had that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so you got that Wednesday play-in game to 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 get to the normal Thursday games that we're used to uh, in the SEC. And so, I guess let let's kick things right off, and I'll I will pull that up. I think I can if. If technology works to be my friend, and that's not uh, <laughs> wrong button there. Here we go. There we are. For those that are watching the YouTube, uh, you can see what the bracket looks like. So we're, we're our first play-in game is going to be tomorrow evening uh, at 7:30. Why the why such a late start for an ESPN three game? I mean. Yeah. I thought that was odd too. Um, I, I I really I don't I can't even come up with a reason why it would be like that. It would be like that. I didn't notice that until I just looked at it and saw that. You know, I was thinking of ESPN two. I could understand or ESPN definitely understand. But you know, I'm looking at it and it says SEC Network and ESPN three. Uh, you know, you you would think that you could start that that game, especially since. Potentially, they're going to have to win one, two, three, four, five days in a row uh, if you want to go all the way. You know, yeah, you'd think they'd do them a little bit of a favor and have it be at noon and 2.30. I mean, that, that second game, you know, you might not be leaving the arena until after midnight. Yeah, well, I mean, even I understand why you don't want noon and 2.30. It's a Wednesday afternoon. Nobody's going to watch it, but you could get a 4 or 5 o'clock. Nobody's <laughs> watching these games anyway. <laughs> so, so cut your losses and just get them right. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the first game, like I said, the South Carolina and Mississippi State. Gosh, I, I'm going to have to lean with South Carolina on that one, even though um, – I don't. I've seen Mississippi State play. I've seen them look awful at times, but I've seen them also have some flashes. I mean, you know, they did beat Ole Miss a week or so ago, which was probably their most signature win of the entire season. So for them, you know, they they're they're possibly pa playing for an NIT no matter what happens, unless they can win the the tournament, which is doubtful at best. Right. Uh, so so I mean, you know, maybe they just go on and. Both teams lose on purpose, and and can they do that? Both teams lose. <laughs> I think everybody loses if you're watching Mississippi State, South Carolina this year. <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> and then the next one is, is Texas A&M Auburn. Maybe probably a little better watching uh, game to watch. Maybe that's why they they put them later in the evening. I don't know. Um, but you know, I, I personally am going to give that to South Carolina and A&M. Um, for those two games, and that's going to give Tennessee uh, a South Carolina matchup, uh, and it's going to give Missouri the A&M. So, yeah, I would, I would have to agree with you, and I would also, as an Alabama fan, I'd be remiss to uh, miss this opportunity to point out that Auburn is the first team in SEC history to come in 14th place in football and in basketball, so everyone just keep that in mind. has nothing to do with the fact that they are uh, – 
14, there's never been 14 teams, though. Oh, no, I mean, that's just a trivial sidebar fact, you know. Yeah, no, 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 nothing to that at all. <laughs> um, I, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, have they, have they ever been second? I mean, 12th and 12th? Um, I don't know, but 14th just sounds so much better than 12th to me. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Good for them. Good for, good for you, Alabama fans, to have another reason to, to brag this year. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've wasted ten minutes talking about two playing games that nobody's going to be watching except <laughs> press, um, and and maybe a Mississippi State fan or, or an A and M fan, because you know South Carolina and Auburn fans aren't even going to watch that game. No. Uh, you know that brings us to to the real uh, matchups. Uh, of day one matchups that we're used to, and that's going to be, you know, your your eight teams. Um, and you, this team, this year you got four teams that get a bye. Uh, you get actually four teams get a double bye. So it's uh, really good news for those pro- for those programs. They they get Friday and, and are already in the quarters. Uh, but you got LSU Georgia. You know, what what do you think there? Uh- I mean, Georgia has been one of the hottest teams in the SEC the past, what, two weeks with um, wins over Kentucky. Did they beat Florida? Is that the other? Tennessee, yeah. Uh, wins over Kentucky. Tennessee should have beaten Alabama. Had a, just a crazy shot that beat them um, against Alabama. And, you know, for as bad as they were early in the season, they seem to be – on somewhat of a roll now, um, but you know, I, I, LSU. I, neither of them are great. I don't know. It's just, what do you expect from these teams right now? I don't know. You, you could. It's hard to pick any of these games because it's just so hard to predict what one team is going to look like from one night to the next. Yeah, and and what you're going to run across here is is a theme, and, and most of these teams, and, and this is really a theme that. You know, you talk about Arkansas. We'll use them as an example. But we have that they come up a little bit later. But you know, you talk about how well they play at home, and right? How well they play on the road. But if you look at most programs, that's the case with all of them. Uh, right. Even if they have a loss or two, uh, you know, they're going to play a lot better at home. So you, you expect that, and and you expect that a team goes on the road and has a difficult time because it's a hostile environment. And, and in basketball, more than any other sport, I think the home home court has such a, a such an advantage in the way that uh, you know teams will be able to react to things. So uh, you know that aside, this is going to be a neutral field, so that's going to help them a lot. But uh, you know, I, I'm with you. I think George is going to handle that one though to, to bring this back around to, to the subject at hand, and then that's going to lead them to play Florida on Friday, and. You know, and that is an early game. That's going to be uh, a 12 o'clock local time tip-off. And there again, it's on the U as well. You know, this is the SEC here. Why are we on ESPN U all week? Um, and so, again, I guess this is, I'm going to rant about TV. So, so we're getting the SEC is being preempted for what Sports Center on on the the, the major network, and, and instead we get relegated to to the U. Or That's is, is the Big East on? Right. I, well, I bet the Big East is on, and it's the last Big East tournament, so they're probably giving it all the coverage it can stand. And, and of course, eight teams there versus you know two or three teams going to the tournament with with uh, the SEC. So I, I guess that makes a little sense. But uh, you know, I don't think Florida will have any problem handling Georgia and going to the semifinals. Um, I, you know, it's. I agree, but at the same time, um, Florida seems to really have a folding problem in close games. And if Georgia is kind of on a roll, and it is, you know, it seems like Florida wins by 10 or loses by 2, or wins by 15 even, or loses by 1 or 2, and they, they have trouble closing out some games. So, I don't know, that could be one of those upset alerts. Um, and Florida's been... Shaky here the last you know month of the season. Um, depends on how focused they are. I don't know. That will be interesting. I think Florida is obviously the better team, but um, I just I don't. I'm not picking Florida to go far in my bracket. I'll put it that way. So I wouldn't be surprised. 
no, if I'm they not, were to get beat by someone like Georgia. I'm not. I don't have them very far in my bracket either. But if you do look at at their at their their losses, aside from the Kentucky loss, which which was close all the way up to the very end and was still only a four point game. Uh, you know, the two losses they had late in the season was Missouri and Tennessee. And during both of those, they were playing with two or three men down. So, you know, once they, they got healthy, they had Alabama, won that one pretty easily, and then Vanderbilt they destroyed. Um, and then, you know, Kentucky was playing for their lives. Right. So it was a little bit different story for, for Florida. Uh, and you're also talking about Florida coming back and playing the next game after a loss. Uh, and if you look at their, their schedule, they, they did not have back-to-back -back losses uh, the entire season. So, I mean, every time they had a loss, they, they followed that with a win. So I, I just see it doubtful for them to play a Georgia team uh, and then come off. I mean, and you're talking about a Georgia team who's 9-9 nine and nine in the conference play, 15-16 uh, and 16 overall. So they're not even a 500 team overall to come in and, and lose to those guys in their first game in the quarterfinals for Florida just seems doubtful for me. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that I don't think they might lose in the semis or even the the championship, but to, 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 to give them a loss that first round, I just don't see that happening. The uh, ghost of Sunday out of Gaines might take over for the Bulldogs and they go on a magical run to the tournament. <laughs> well... I think there's they're not calling for tornado tornadoes or bad weather. Because <laughs> uh, I think if I remember correctly, Kentucky got the, uh, a raw end of that deal with with the way they were having to play a game um, and had to play Georgia even on a shorter time period than Georgia Georgia got with their rest. So uh, that year, uh, you know, I don't I don't see their have them having a remarkable run uh, deep in the tournament and even in no, I don't need so. Anyways, we'll we'll give that one to Florida. So we'll look at that lower bracket. Uh, we I said Mississippi State, and you said you agreed with me. Is that correct? Uh, oh, yeah. South no, South Carolina. Carolina. Uh, see, it, they're both so bad I can't even pick <laughs> twice. Does it even matter? <laughs> we're going to give that win to Tennessee. Is what yeah, Tennessee's doing. advancing in that game basically. Well, I mean, it, and we've mentioned the bracketology and Joe Lenardi over at ESPN, and he's got them right now as one of the first four out. Um, what are your thoughts on that? On them being first four out? Yeah. I think that's, I, that's where they belong. You think they belong in the field? I'd have to agree with it right now. Now, if they win, like just beating either South Carolina or Mississippi State isn't enough, but if they win that round, two, or, uh, round three game, which would, probably, which would be Alabama, then I think... They've got to be in because they would be what wouldn't they be at 21 wins then? Um, they've got a, a decent strength of schedule. Um, they have some quality wins and they've been on on fire lately. Um, I, I do think they have to win at least one and probably two to to not be first four out. But as it stands right now, I agree. How about you? Yeah, no, I I totally agree. I mean, you look at. That Georgia loss, uh, really, and we said Georgia beat Tennessee. Right. Yeah, that Georgia loss really hurt uh, Tennessee because they had that game, and they had their chances inside that game and lost it. That was two two or three games ago now. But that's where you know Tennessee really hurt their chances. Uh, like you said, uh, it's going to take more than one win, and I think you're right. If they come off and end up in the semis, that's giving them a win against South Carolina or Mississippi State just – pick your, your bad program and put it in there, then then you're up against Alabama, who Joe Lenardi has as the next, one of the teams on the next four out. So, you know, now all of a sudden you're beating a, another quality opponent that, that's definitely trying to, to fight for their life as well. So that should be a great game uh, because Alabama's going to need to win that, win the semifinals, and have a good showing in the championship at that point because if you think about it, they would at least flip-flop with UT if they beat them. So now they're, at worst, uh, a first four out, and then an extra win or so with a semis or a championship win can put Alabama possibly into the tournament as well. So now you're looking at possibly four teams. So I think there's a pretty good chance, um, and, and while we're talking about it, Ole Miss is the other team 
because uh, when we were originally talking about this conversation, Kentucky's first four in, and then you have Ole Miss and UT both as a first four out, and then the next four out you have an Alabama program. So you got four four SEC programs there um, fighting for their lives to stay into the the tournament right now, and so. You know, I think if, if one of those two teams, Tennessee or Alabama, can, can put on a run and win a couple games, I think there's a chance, unless something crazy happens, and that's the thing about the tournament we don't know, is that if one of these, like a Belmont, um, you know, they, they did what they were supposed to, but you look at a, a Middle Tennessee uh, and my alma mater, Western, uh, you know, actually, thank you, Rick Patino's son, Richard Patino, uh, and his FIU um ball club that they actually beat mtsu and you know that was a program that everybody was talking about was in and now all of a sudden you know since they lost in the semis and not the finals of the sunbelt conference there's a pretty good chance right now that they're sitting on the outside looking in uh and a team like western kentucky who who battled injuries uh and a mediocre season now comes back in and wins the sunbelt for two two years in a row uh to go to the tournament but you know, that takes a program like a Tennessee or an Alabama and takes away a spot that they possibly could have. Now, all of a sudden, because because if middle does make it, uh, because they've got a great strength of schedule, they've had some quality of quality wins. They're, what, a 20, 25, 28 wins this season? I think 28 wins, yeah. So I, mean, I get their record. That's a lot of wins. <laughs> I, I get their record in Belmont mixed up because we hear, we hear them so much here in Nashville. But you, you look at both of those programs, I mean, that can happen two or three different places across the, uh, the nation this week as these, these championship week keeps moving forward. And now all of a sudden, they are, they're on the outside looking in. So if some of those things don't happen, to get back to, my, to where I was going with this, UT or Alabama have a strong shot to win some games uh, and try to work them way, themselves into this tournament, uh, to the NCAA tournament. Right, the, uh, the MTSU thing is is interesting because obviously here, being living in Middle Tennessee, right. there's a lot of local support that you know they won 28 games, um, they should be in even though they didn't win. But even I've seen some national Pat Forty, for instance. Um, I think maybe Gene Wojciechowski are kind of saying, hey, they won 28 games. Look at some of the this really mediocre basketball being played by some of these SEC teams and other conference teams, power conference teams. MTSU should be in. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see because obviously with Western winning and MTSU, if they were to get the at-large, that, that puts one of these bubble teams out. So... Um, it's you, that's why you hate being on the bubble because you've got to you've got to grind it out and watch all these uh, conference tournaments of teams you've never heard of that <laughs> might might be um, the favorite team that's going to get the automatic bid and all of a sudden you've got to worry about your spot being taken. So, so that's where you got to feel bad for a team like Middle because I mean they're they're a program that, like you said, won 28 games and realistically probably deserve a shot to be in the tournament. Uh, but because they lost their conference championship game, now they're on the outside looking in and quite possibly stay out there. It depends on how things shake up there. Um, so I guess we're, we're, we've talked Tennessee and Alabama. Uh, we're both going to give Tennessee the win over whoever. Now Tennessee does play Alabama uh, that afternoon game on Thursday, or that afternoon game on Friday. Who are you, you going to think that's got that shot? Who are you giving that game to? Um, well, I hate to say it, but I just I have no faith in Alabama rising to the occasion and, and being able to win, you know, a game that really, really matters. Um, so many of the times when they've been faced with that in the regular season, they've come out and looked just awful. Um, I've seen high school basketball that's more fundamentally sound and, and all of that stuff. Um, so, and as we talked about briefly, Tennessee's rolling right now. McCray is possibly the best player in the SEC. Um, Alabama is going to go through one of those eight-minute stretches where they don't score because they do it every single game. And I just see Tennessee, I think it'll be close because they're both going to be fighting for their lives, but I, I just see Tennessee having two players that are better 
than any one player Alabama has. Relaford's close, but um, I think McCray and um, Tennessee's post player, whose name just left my mind. Say Stokes. Are both better. Stokes, yeah, sorry. Just completely lost lost his name there. Um, so, I I mean, Alabama could definitely win, but I, I just think Tennessee's the better team right now. I agree that Tennessee's the better team. And call me crazy, but and it could be the Chicago Cubs fan in me that, that's coming out right here. <laughs> but if you look at Alabama over the last two, three years now, three now this season, maybe four, how many times have they been in this same situation? It's every season they're right there on that last four out looking into the tournament. Sooner or later, something's going to have to happen, and they're going to overcome that hump. Now, I say that every year when baseball season starts and the Chicago Cubs hit the field, and it, it's been 100 and, what, 15 years, something like that? Something like that. I lost count. Um, I used to be able to tell you to the day, um, but – and maybe they are going to be like the Cubs and just can't get over that hump. But I, I don't think that's the case with Alabama. And I've seen Tennessee play both sides of that fence. I've seen them play incredibly well, and I've seen them just have just pathetic performances as well. And for that reason, I'm going to give fate and just like flipping a coin, sooner or later it's going to have to land tails if it's land heads the last 20 times. Sooner or later that – the odds are in your favor that you're going to have to win one of those. And so I think I'm going to give that one to Alabama, and I'm going to give them the next game against Florida to go to the championship game. Wow. Calling your shot, huh? Calling it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're right. Um, I mean, that's, I think that's what's, that's what's going to have to happen for Alabama to make it to the tournament. Uh, and Tennessee's going to have to beat Alabama and Florida as well. Now, what's going to happen, I don't know, but that's just that's just my thoughts on it. It really depends on which Tennessee program shows up, which Alabama team shows up. And exactly opposite of what I said could it could happen in a heartbeat, but I just I feel like it's Alabama's time. I I, I thought they deserved to be in last year. They made they, last year. I thought they made the NIT last year. No, they uh, two years ago they had a deep run in the NIT. Last year they made it. They kind of backed their way in because, again, they had a poor showing in the tournament, but they lost the Creighton in the first round last year. See, I was thinking they got they got this the second time in a row. No. Well, now you you just took my whole theory and just blew it the water. <laughs> well, I, I said it. I'm going to go with it anyway. I hope you're right. Uh, but the thing that you, I mean, you said, you know, it depends on which team shows up. I mean, other than Florida, maybe Ole Miss and Kentucky, you can pretty much say that about every team in in this SEC tournament. It, you know, we've seen them all play terribly. We've seen them all play well. It's uh, which team shows up. And uh, this has got to be one of the harder SEC tournaments to pick in recent memory. Oh, I... Without a doubt, I mean it's just it's anybody's ball game at any any particular time. So I don't know, but the, it, I think there's five teams, maybe six, that legitimately have a shot, uh, and that's about as deep as it gets. It's not anybody's ball game, but it's definitely um, not just one or two teams that have a shot to win this thing. And you're right, uh, Alabama lost by one point, fifty-eight, fifty-seven. Uh, in the first round against Creighton. Yeah, that that uh, dreaded 60-point barrier that Alabama's scared to crack. Hey, Tennessee can't. Tennessee didn't even crack 40 one night against uh, Georgetown this season. So, <laughs> and and we're talking about those two teams. What, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, let's leave that alone and go on to the next one. Uh, <laughs> Arkansas at Vanderbilt, or at not. I'd like to say it's going to be a home game for Randall but I don't even think they travel to Matt, down yeah. the West End of Nashville is a good two miles. Yeah, that's such an odd thing. Uh, as many times as the tournament has been in Nashville, I don't know if there's just not as many Vanderbilt fans. They're supposedly passionate about basketball. Maybe all the Kentucky fans are buying the tickets up. I don't know. But. They feel Memorial Gym. Right. They, Memorial rocks when they have a home game, but they do not show up to the – championship the way that they do. 
Yeah. Home games. And maybe it's just not like, I mean, last year they, everybody thought Vanderbilt had a shot, and they did. They won it. Right. You know, this year maybe it's just because they give, they, nobody's given Vanderbilt a shot. I mean, it's, as bad as Arkansas plays on the road, I think they've got Vanderbilt here. I agree. Uh, but then the, then they do play Kentucky, and I do think that they're gonna, Kentucky's going to be the better team. And uh, the, the miss is going to show up. It's going to be an away game for Arkansas, uh, and Kentucky's going to win that one. I agree. All right, easy enough. So now we're, we're looking at the last one. A&M, we both said they, they're going to beat Auburn, so yep, that's yep. going to have them play in Missouri. Do you think A&M has a shot? Um, I don't. When it comes down, down to tournament time, your guard play is, is – uh, is so key, and Missouri's got got the backcourt to win, and Texas A&M hasn't done anything to prove they can they can do anything in this tournament. Not to mention, it still just shocks me that Missouri is the sixth seed. I mean, when you when you watch them play, they seem like one of the better teams in the league. But then again, they're they're one of those other teams that has just not shown up a few times. But I I tend to think that because of their guard play, they will show up and will handle A&M pretty easily in their first game. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Missouri and, and what they what they bring to the table, I mean, a couple of weeks ago they were, people were talking about they could have been the, the second-best team in the conference behind Florida, and you finished, you know, sixth in the SEC. So uh, you're right. Uh, it, it They are a little surprising at, at what their record is for the talent that's on the, the, the court there. I mean, they got – Pressy, um, who's just an amazing uh, guard. Uh, if he shows up and him and Bell are able to, to run that program, run that team, run that offense, um, I don't think there's any question at all that, that they're going to win. And and honestly, they have a shot to beat Ole Miss because Ole Miss is suspect at times as well, and that's who Missouri would play in that quarterfinal matchup. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Um Ole Miss is so reliant on on their one scorer at times, um, and it, Ole Miss of, out of everyone just really has not been tested this year. I mean, I know they won a lot of games, but um, you know, SEC was so down this year that they didn't have a lot of tough games. And out of conference, I know we talked about this at the beginning of the season. Their out of conference schedule was a complete joke. So yeah, but if you have no. You look at their losses. I mean, they lost to Mississippi State, who we've already talked about. They lost to South Carolina, who we've already talked about. They've lost to A&M, who we've already talked about. They've lost to Missouri, who we're talking about now. I mean, in SEC play, that's that's four of your six losses. The other two are are Kentucky and, and Florida, and of course, there's that's, there's understanding why that could have happened. But the other programs, I mean, if you're looking at a number three seed. Your your losses shouldn't be those teams. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, three of your six losses are to the th- three of the worst teams in the league. Yeah, uh, four really. I mean, when you want to say Missouri's lower ranked than they are, right? So, I just I I, for, I can't go with Ole Miss in that one. I'm gonna have to go with Missouri. Uh, that's gonna pit uh, Missouri versus Kentucky there in the semis. I also just really can't stand Marshall Henderson and I want him to miss 14 shots and have eight turnovers and maybe get a busted lip from an elbow or something. I just, I can't stand his antics and I really don't want him to have success. So for that reason, I'm going Missouri. If you talk to, I mean, everybody that's been on this podcast, I think would rather see a beer bottle hit him upside the head than watch him on the court. I mean, I, I know, I know, you probably haven't watched every minute of, of our podcast over the last couple of months, but everybody that's been on has talked about how bad his attitude is and the way he taunts and, and carries on and just deserves to get clocked when he's on the court. Yeah, I think he's one of those guys that everyone but the team that he's playing for hates him. I mean, I'm sure all Miss fans love it, but everyone else hates him. Well, uh, uh, Cole Hodges, who's also been on here, is an Miss, uh, Ole Miss guy. You know, he was supposed to be on last week so we could get an Ole Miss perspective on this, and he he, he had to go out with the wife and, and could had to had to cancel on it. So so we we don't even have the Ole Miss perspective on that to to say what what is or isn't going to happen there. So all right, so I'm I've got 
Missouri beat No Miss. What do you have? I'm going to go with Missouri as well. All right. Now, Missouri, Kentucky, I'll let you take the lead. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, you know a lot more about this. I Honestly, I haven't gotten much of a chance to watch Kentucky post the Nerlens Noel injury. Um, so I don't have a great – I know that they're – were they 4-3 and three since the injury? Um, that sounds close. And I know they got dominated by Tennessee their, the first game after the injury. Um, and, again, Kentucky's hard to trust. But, you know, it's March and it's Kentucky. And it's really difficult for me to believe that they're not going to show up and, uh, and 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 handle things, and especially because I think both Vanderbilt and Arkansas are not very good. Um, so even even a, a mediocre um, Kentucky that's not living up to the typical standards, I believe will will fairly easily handle Vanderbilt and Arkansas, but or Arkansas. But you're the expert. Um, uh, I mean, they lost four, but you know one of those losses was the Noel game. That was the Florida game. So they, they, they lost that one, and they looked flat from the beginning of that one. So there was two flat ones in a row, Florida and then the letdown game against Tennessee where they just just were destroyed from the very beginning at that one. Um, but then they came back and, and beat Vanderbilt, who, like you said, should, shouldn't be a problem for them now. Um, and it took Missouri into overtime to win. Uh, a great performance in Mississippi State, but then you have back-to-back losses at at Arkansas and at Georgia. And, you know, everybody thought that, that Kentucky's was, run was done and they were going to the NIT. Uh, you know, they were sitting outside looking in. And then, then Florida comes to town for senior night, uh, and, and they win that game. And that was a great fought game. Uh, it was they, they played like they were, uh, you know, that if they can play like they played against Florida, uh, every game here coming in, they can go far in the tournament. They're not, uh, they, I don't, I'm not going to say they're going to go to the Final Four or, you know, we have a hang another banner up in Lexington. But the the play that you got out of Kentucky against that uh, Florida program, uh, it, was, it was great. I mean, you had, you know, you've got Goodwin and Porthris finally starting to do some good things there. Um, I, it, really what it boils down to me is this team is just so young. And I've said this before on some of the podcasts, they just lack that senior leadership. Um, and, and if you look at what they've had prior, I mean, they've got Julius Mays, who's a senior now, but, you know, they had those leaders on the court that were an upperclassman, whether it would be a sophomore, junior, somebody that actually had a year's worth of experience, an actual real playing time. Nothing against Julius. He's had a great season for Kentucky, and I'm so glad he's there. He helped. He has helped ground this program a little bit. But that one player that, that they can lean to that's been there and that's done that, uh, it's not there right now. And so uh, th- they've had to come a long way as a young program, and you see so many glimpses of a young program when you watch them on the court. They make some silly mistakes. They're, they're mentally not where they need to be uh, t- to get to the caliber of program that you expect from Kentucky. Uh, with that being said, though, they, they've got all the talent in the world. Uh, you know, you still have – a program that's looking to maybe put two or three players in the pros, and one of them's not played the last half of the season, uh, with that being Noel. Uh, I, Willie Colley Stein's really stepped up down low, um, starting to, to really show what he's about. He needs to learn to keep his feet on the ground and, and learn that he doesn't always have to, to leave his feet to block shots. He's so tall and long, just like, the, just like Kentucky centers here of late. Uh, they've got that link that they don't have to do that. So um, maybe, you know, I've said it before, maybe the Kentucky's turned a corner. Um, you know, maybe if you say it long enough, you'll start believing it. But uh, th- there's there's chances there. Uh, I'm going to give them that game against Missouri. Uh, I think that, you know, I think I, I'd have to go back and look. But was Missouri an away game for the Kentucky? Do you remember, did they play Missouri at Missouri? I don't remember. I was actually going to ask you that. Um, no, it was at Kentucky. I just looked at it. Um, so, you know, they took they took them to overtime in just a couple weeks ago in Lexington. I do think that, you know, if things start to shake out, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's where you really might start to see Kentucky fans. 
Um, and that could be why we're hearing glimpses that there's early tickets because now you're talking games Wednesday, Thursday, where Kentucky's not even going to be in the program. They're not here till you know, that evening. So a lot of Kentucky fans can work a half a day Friday. Right. You'll get down here in time for tip-off. Uh, yeah, and that, not, not to sidebar too much, but I do really like the way – because of the 14 teams, the way that you're kind of rewarded a little bit extra now for being one of those top four seeds and sort and getting two buys and um, you could you you might be right though that the, the reason some of those first two days tickets are available is you don't have to take any vacation days and you can still not miss any Kentucky basketball. Yeah, I mean, you know, I know like a lot of Kentucky fans will buy the whole pass. Right. And so you know. I do see a lot of empty seats Wednesday and Thursday because they're not going to be here to fill them. They'd rather do that. And, and we've talked about this la last time that, uh, you know, Kentucky was here. Was that two years ago? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because um, they were in Atlanta last year. But when when Kentucky came two years ago, I mean, the, the Big Blue Nation comes in force. And, and a lot of times – People can't get to Rupp Arena. I mean, there's so many season ticket holders there. It's somewhat like Green Bay uh, in football that it's a hard ticket to get any game unless you're going to go see them play, you know, one of those early early season games where they, they're they a nobody opponent. Uh, you just don't – it's just not an easy ticket to get for a lot of Kentucky fans, whereas they know that the, they're going to get to see Kentucky a couple times in the tournament. So as soon as tickets go on sale last year, there's a lot of Kentucky fans that probably bought their season ticket for, for this year, so they knew they could come watch Kentucky play. Uh, right, so, right. You know, you get, and you get that in Atlanta, too. It's an easy drive for Kentucky, uh, especially here to Nashville. I mean, you can get to, to the Kentucky line in 40 minutes. Uh, you can get to Bowling Green in, in about an hour from downtown, so... Now you're talking two hours to Lexington or Louisville. That's not a bad drive. Um, you know, two and a, two to three hour drive to get the most of Kentucky into to Nashville to watch them play. That's that's not a bad not a bad gig for a lot of Kentucky fans. So, you know, for that reason, you're going to probably see a, an influx of those folks come in Friday afternoon, and that, that's just my guess. All right, so we're looking at this. So I have. I'm going to give Kentucky the win against Missouri and put them in the championship game. Okay, so what are your semifinals you've got? Tell me what your semifinals are again. I have Alabama, I have Florida, Alabama, Kentucky, Missouri. Okay, so I think I agree with you. It'll be Kentucky and Missouri, and I've got Tennessee, Florida. We've got Tennessee, Florida. Yeah, and um, so I think this is where we're going to diverge because you called your shot a little bit earlier, so it looks like we might have a different championship game. So you want to go first for your who's going to the championship game, and then I'll go, or you want me to go? Well, I have Alabama, so you, you go your – you go give your top bracket there. Okay, I am going to go uh, – I'm, I'm going some upsets here because I, I think – I think that um, this is definitely not going to be a, a year for for the ch the chalk. So um, I'm going to think I'm going to go with Tennessee beating Florida, and I'm going to go with Missouri beating Kentucky to go to the championship game. It'll be a weird championship what? game. <laughs> um, I I'm going to I'm going to go with you to say Florida's not making the semifinals, and I've got Alabama doing it. Um, but I. You know, I'm just a homer, I guess. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. That's what we're here for. Well, originally, I, I really originally wasn't going to pick Kentucky as much as I wanted to, but then all of a sudden I'm going through this bracket with you, and, and if Alabama or Tennessee shows up in the championship game... You've got to like line with these chances. I'm going to give it to Kentucky. And, yeah. and Kentucky's already shown they can beat Florida at Florida. So, you know, any one of those three, I'm going to have to give Kentucky the fighting chance and this is going to be more of a home game than Florida we already just we just got through talking about how Kentucky fans will travel and believe you me that if Kentucky ends up in the championship game that that crowd's going to be blue they're going to find a way to get here 
Yeah. They always do. And so, yeah, absolutely. So I can't, I mean, and, and so much that I'm, the upset's going to be that the number two seed is going to win and not the number one. I'm going to have to go with Kentucky, um, but they're going to beat the number four seed, Alabama, to do that. Okay. And I, I actually totally agree with you. I don't really want to pick Kentucky either, but when you look at who they might wind up facing, it's like, wow, I mean, it, it just goes back to the SEC just isn't that good this year, and so it's hard to – it's hard to pick an Alabama or a Tennessee. However, I do have Tennessee in the championship game against Missouri, and I actually think Phil Pressy and that guard play for Missouri is going to finally come through, and I think Missouri winds up winning the SEC championship in their first season as a member. You, you could be right. I, I think that I think if that happens, Kentucky might might end up. Do you think, do you think they they would have a chance of not making the NCAA if that happened? So, you're saying if they lose to well, it depends on when they lose. You're saying Missouri. Uh, right. Well, I'm saying Missouri beats Kentucky in the, the third. Yeah, yeah, in the semis. Right. Sorry. So that um, Kentucky only one more win. Yeah. Well, you know that's a good point. I guess it is possible that if they don't get two wins, that, that they're definitely in trouble there because they're firmly on the bubble, according to Joe Lenardi. What's funny about this whole conversation we've just had? <laughs> we keep... <laughs> we say all that, and you look at it, Missouri is safely in as a number eight seed right now. Yeah. That They could lose first round, and, and they might drop to a 12. I don't think they're going to get out of the tournament, do you? No, I don't. Well, although if they lost in the first round, they'd be losing to uh, either Texas a and or Auburn, and that's a bad, bad loss. So right, that would give them one win. Uh, yeah, they, and lose to Ole Miss, which which could happen, I guess. Yeah, it could happen definitely. Uh, um, I don't know. That's just... it's a crazy year. I mean, it's 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 sort of a microcosm of the tournament as a whole. I feel like this. The NCAA tournament is going to be so hard to pick this year, which is probably going to make it super exciting. But, you know, I've, as we've talked through this, I've second-guessed every pick that I've made for this SEC tournament, and I kind of want to rip up my bracket already and start a new one. I mean, it's just so hard to know what team is going to show up on what night and what to expect out of, aside from a handful of the elite teams in air quotes around the country who um, even those elite teams seem to get beat every other night. <laughs> no, you're right about that. Uh, I mean, or, or telling off the other team's coaches, which whichever you want to do there. You're either going to lose a game or, or tell off the other coach when you win like Indiana did last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're right. I mean, as, as great as everybody says Indiana and Duke and uh, whoever else, Gonzaga... Gonzaga is good, but all the other yeah, yeah. number one seeds that you're talking about, they've got their fair share of losses this year. It's not just, you know, that like a Kentucky last year where you just had one or two losses the entire season to be that dominant team. So for them to anoint Indiana right now, I think that's a little premature. They're a good program, and and, it, and there again, it's the Homer and me being from Kentucky, uh, but you know, they've showed cha they've showed glimmers of, of being a, a very beatable program this year in more than, yeah, yeah. More than one game. And, and if you look at that last second tip by Michigan, you know, they they were a couple of missed baskets away or made baskets by the other team of, of really being a, a subpar program and having four or five more losses. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And the number of uh, one seeds that, you know, I'm kind of looking through Lenardi's brackets right now. As, you know, he dates them every few days when he puts them out. And the number of one seeds that have shown up, I, I've got to imagine that this is the most one seeds that he's had in this season. I mean, at one time, Miami was a one seed. You know, you, you seem to name the, the top ten or so. They were a one seed at one point because someone else lost in front of them. Louisville. Louisville, yeah. Gonzaga, you're right, is kind of the only one that's been steady. And I do think they're good. They've got 
guard play and a, and a big guy that can get it done, but I still have that, you know, who have you played in the last exactly. six weeks of the season. No, I, I'm with you there, but I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm glad that it's here. It's, it's definitely the time that basketball fans get passionate. So that's our rundown of what we think the tournament's going to happen. I've got Kentucky going. Uh, we'll cut down the nets here in Nashville come Sunday afternoon about 3.30. And <laughs> Britain's got, uh, did we say Tennessee? Uh, Missouri beating Tennessee. Missouri beating Tennessee. The black and gold for two years in a row will be cutting down nets for the SEC from two different programs. That's what you're saying, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, good predictions, everybody. We'll... we'll Love to listen. If you're listening this far into the podcast, we'd love to hear what you think on our Facebook uh, page. Come out and, and tell us uh, who you think is going to be the team that's going to cut down the nets come Sunday in Nashville. We'd love to hear from you there on our Facebook channel, SCCSRT on Facebook. Uh, Twitter is the same thing, SCCSRT, as well as Stitcher Radio. It's another place you can listen to this podcast. Or if you want to watch, uh, Britain and I's beautiful faces on television, standing in front of microphones for an hour, thereabouts. Um, you know, we're on YouTube at uh, SECSRT. This is episode 73. I think I have a working title. We'll get that up shortly. It's down to a couple things here. Uh, that's the thing about our title. We never know what the real title is until, until the, the podcast's over. So. It's very organic that way. way. It is. Uh, <laughs> and I think Britain, both of my choices are Britain, so... Uh, when Britain's on, he's good about he's good for a, a show title or two <laughs> from from our past podcast. So I'm looking forward to see what he thinks on this. But uh, I'm I'm I think we're at that part of the podcast where we we go open mic. Anything you want to cover, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Um, yeah, two two, two points. points. It's spring is sort of here. Sunday in Nashville is beautiful. There's trees budding everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're starting. The beautiful thing about living in the South is that in in early March it starts to get warm, and that's one reason I'll never live north of the uh, Mason-Dixon. But I could not be more excited. We can start grilling and taking care of lawns again and all that good stuff. And tournament time. I mean, this is as an Alabama fan, unless Alabama is really good, which they haven't been in a while. You know, I don't I don't obsess over basketball until it gets to that last week of the regular season and then the SEC tournament and hopefully the NCAA tournament. So I'm excited. I mean, it's it's bracketology time. I'm at a new job, so I'm not going to be able to slack off and watch games all day at work like I have in the past. Got to pretend to make a good impression for a little while, but um, I'm very excited. Now, I hope your boss says about midway through Thursday, hey, let's go watch games next week. I hope yeah, that would be great. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I'm going to have to check out my schedule and see what scheduling uh, I have and make sure I can I schedule on a game or two next week as well. Well, I think you are on Twitter. You, I, I've oh, yeah, a yeah. tweet or two from you. Anybody listening want to follow you? Where can they find you, Britta? Follow me at RTR Britta, B-R-I-T-A, and I would love to have you. Awesome. Well, I, I couldn't agree more about springtime. I, I noticed that today going through... Bell Mead on the way home is that there were just trees everywhere, red buds and uh, I don't know what, what other kind of white flower tree it was. It wasn't like a tulip poplar or anything like that, but it, they were just starting to bloom. It's like, holy mackerel, that just happened overnight. Um, <laughs> you know, we got near 70 degree weather coming up. It's, uh, uh, I, I think we're done with, with winter, like you said, and I can't wait. Uh, the time change was, was welcomed. Uh, you really, yeah, absolutely. It was, it was like, uh, you know, when you're getting ready to end school for me, uh, every week, every day leading up to that time change, I was able to notice that it was getting darker later and later. So, man, it's like 6 o'clock and there's still sunlight out. Yeah. yeah. Next week it's going to be 7 o'clock and there's still going to be sunlight out. This is awesome. <laughs> Very awesome. So, uh, you know, with my – I did a, I tried a new camera angle tonight. I'm going to have to do some adjusting or rearranging here uh, behind me because if anyone could notice off to my uh, – 
my right here, I've got fairies um, adorning my filing cabinet next to my <laughs> lovely daughter. <laughs> and I just realized that probably about 15 minutes ago. So. You can't really tell. It's a little distorted, but since you've said it now, we all know what they are. <laughs> it's all Tinkerbell and the Disney, Disney's got the way of getting their paws into you, no matter no matter who you are, I guess. So. Uh, you know, so maybe Maybe we'll leave the fairies here. Maybe they'll get a little closer. Who knows? But, uh, guys, you can follow me on Twitter at P. Shane Bailey. Uh, that's my personal Twitter. And, again, the, the if you want to follow the podcast and it's uh, Twitter, it's S-E-C-S-R-T on, on Twitter. And with that, folks, we're going to call this podcast done. <laughs>